What's the word, y'all? Affectionate Soup 24 on Reddit says, what is an NBA conspiracy theory that you believe? I, I just saw this a little while ago, and though I have not read a single comment, I'm fascinated with all the stuff that could be potentially in, in this thread. Because a conspiracy theory, especially in the sports world, could keep my attention for a very, very long time. Like, they're typically pretty harmless, which I enjoy. I mean, once we start talking about conspiracy theories and other worldly things, uh, it's not as fun for me. But in sports, 1,000%. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, they're the famous ones who I'm sure I'm going to see in this thread. Like, Michael Jordan getting suspended from the NBA, and that's why he went to go play baseball. Whatever. Um, the next one, the frozen envelope to get Patrick Ewan to New York. Another big conspiracy theory. Also one that I am in favor of, specifically this season. Hey, Adam Silver, if you want to rig the lottery, this is the year if you want to get Vic into a, a big market. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a big market team that's pick is top four protected, and they need all the help in the world. Let's let's make the bull, rig it for the bulls. That's all I'm really saying. No, but my favorite NBA conspiracy theory, I don't even know if it's considered a conspiracy theory, but something that I believe could have potentially been rigged. Adam Silver, if you're watching this, we still homies him. I don't think it's a coincidence that in the 2018-2019 NBA season, the NBA decided, you know what? We're going to try our very best to combat tanking. We're going to do everything in our power. And the first thing we're going to do is flatten the lottery odds. If you win seven games this season, you no longer get a 25% chance of getting the first overall pick. We're going to flatten it. You get 16, the second worst team gets 16, third worst team gets 16, and so on and so forth. This is the first year they did that. And the team that won the lottery, the New Orleans Pelicans, that was a Zion year, by the way, generational talent, at least a lot of people thought so. And he, he's been living up to that at least when he's healthy the team that won the lottery that year had a six percent chance looks like they might have been trying to set an example don't you think who got the second overall pick shout out to john Morant. the memphis grizzlies who also had like a four percent chance they wanted to show all the other gms around basketball you don't have to necessarily tank to the bottom to get the first and second overall pick and then also i'm not gonna google this because why would i do this such a thing like put in more work um this is right after or during the anthony davis thing and if i'm not mistaken the pelicans didn't have an owner at the time so i can see another conspiracy theory that they rigged it for the pelicans in order to get someone to buy the organization high because they knew that z was coming to new orleans i, I, I mean i could have made that last part off but you know what i'm saying i don't know if that is a crazy coincidence or the lottery odds and then you get to like the Minnesota Timberwolves who won the 2022 um, lottery, 14% chance they were one of the worst teams of basketball. And the Detroit Pistons won in 2021, 14% chance they were one of, one of the worst teams of basketball. And the same with the Orlando Magic. So the one year, the first year that y'all flatten the odds is the one year that somebody jumped up dramatically. You love to see that. You can make an argument for the LeBron James one being rigged or the Derrick Rose one coming to Chicago being rigged. So you know what I'm saying? The lottery odds, the, the drawing of the 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 whatever it's no longer televised because i think people were afraid of the patrick ewan thing happening again but i do believe that um actual nba writers and stuff are in the room when the actual drawing happens so i'm just there's conspiracy theories they're fun all right let's see what the people in the in the uh subreddit are thinking i did google gail benson um and the benson family have owned the pelicans for uh since 2012 so that uh, I kind of made that last part up about them not having an owner. Um, but I think I was conf I was conflicting the Chris Paul deal that got vetoed from the Lakers because I don't think they had an owner then. Either, either way, either way, let's get to the actual subreddit. So the ones that Affection of Soup 24 gave were the MJ gambling things and then the Patrick Ewan being rigged. That's exactly what we said. Let's see. The number one most upvoted thing is a response to Michael Jordan not being um, suspended. Good argument. If you believe David Stern punishes number one moneymaker with the two-year suspension, you really don't know him at all. Good point. Tim Donahue wasn't a lone wolf, and refs determine the outcome of more games than we know. Ah, dang. You know what? This is probably deeper than just conspiracy theory. Um, it's probably the truth. Um, let's be honest. But I, you know, I'm a dude that if you've watched this channel for however long. It's very, 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 very rare that I even mention officiating because I believe that officials have a really tough job that they have to make split decisions literally in the milliseconds to determine whether or not that's a block, that's a charge, is that worth calling the foul, did he actually travel there? They have a tough job and it's, it's, it's hard and they also be screwing up. But I also understand that they're human, so I don't mention it a lot. And yeah, you're probably right. There might be some a couple refs in the league right now that are low-key paying a little bit on the table, but that's 
for somebody else to research and not necessarily me but i understand where you're coming from this was not even really a conspiracy theory nba owners and the league front office conspired to remove sam hinkey from the 76ers gm position but this is the type of stuff i'm here for ryan anderson sucked at shooting in predominantly red arenas due to his him being colorblind and that is something that i i, I didn't even know I, I had no idea that ryan anderson was colorblind and that i about to go see what ryan anderson averaged on the road in chicago averaged on the road in and philly any team that had a a red court i'm about to do some research on this random random conspiracy theory and guess what ladies and gentlemen i ain't had to do my own research this is from six years ago um shout out to uh box on fire for putting this together ryan anderson shooting struggles at home a result of his color blindness if, if you don't want to read all of this all you need to know is that at home, he shot 37% from the field, 33% from three, and 77% from the free throw line. And that was when he played for the Houston Rockets. Remember that. But when he was on the road, his, his percentages jumped up about 10 from the field goal, about 13% difference from three on the road versus home, and then and like a 15% difference between his free throw. That's That database alone, these little statistics alone tell me everything I need to know. That's low-key insane. I had no idea, again, that he was colorblind. Maybe I'm a casual. Maybe that's, like, widely known across NBA fandom. But I didn't know that. This might be an anomaly. But I thought about which other team had a predominantly red court. Chicago comes to mind. His career shooting splits in Chicago. Ridiculously bad compared to the rest of his career. That is a... Like, at this point, is it even really considered a conspiracy theory if we have evidence to, to support... Maybe it still is a conspiracy theory. I mean, he's, he's not even playing anymore i bet we can ask him like i bet someone maybe i should take initiative to find ryan anderson's instagram and twitter and try to dm him dm him about if he's aware of all of this and even before he became a rocket he only shot 29 percent from three in the games that he played against the rocket so again ridiculous write up from six years ago um that makes its way back into nba culture right now I remember seeing this one before. The Moores brothers definitely switched places during the playoff series before. I think it was 2017. One of them was playing and the other one was out for the playoffs. I think Markeith got hurt and it looked bad, but he still suited up to play the next game. I convinced it was Marcus playing. Nowadays, they wouldn't be able to get away with this because Marcus has been a significantly better basketball player. I mean, he might even been that way in 2017 as well. But the thing that makes this fun is the Mark the Morris brothers have identical everything hairstyles, height, near weight, tattoos. These boys are yatted up and they all are identical to their identical brother. I think it was a story a little while ago that they share a bank account. These two identical twins, NBA money, have one bank account between the two of them, which is crazy. Um, I'm gonna try to dive uh, deep into this though, because that, that's a fun one. For reference, I wanna show you the injury that everybody's talking about right here. Um, guard by Al Horford, Al Horford undercuts him and he steps on that foot. And as you can see, he is on the floor for over a minute in agonizing pain. And then again, two days later, he suited up without a hobble. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is a big moment. And while I don't want to spend too much time on one singular one, um, the ringer put together an article once this happened, um, just saying like, Hey, th this is what happened. And they admit that they've done it before. Not in the NBA circuit, but like when they played AAU, um, they've switched jerseys and played for each other. I mean, yeah. I mean, people, I can see them looking different. Obviously, identical twins don't literally look the exact same. But like on national TV, from that view, they could have been the same person, could have been different. It's a good conspiracy theory, though. Okay, this one is low-key kind of crazy. Ursan Ilyasova equals Arsen Ilyasov. Now, that might be confusing to some of you because it was just confusing to me before I looked this up. So according to this conspiracy theory, Ursan Ilyasova isn't a real person. That that's that, that, that's that's what they're saying. Back in 2003, a Turkish news channel came out with a report saying Ursan Ilyasova lied about his his name, age, and nationality. Ilyasova's official birthday of whatever whatever was allegedly false. Ursan was actually born in 1984, making him three years older than the list of age. Now, obviously, if you're an NBA fan, you know that this is not anything that's too out of the ordinary. Um, sometimes people come from overseas and they just lie about their age because the, the younger of a prospect you are, the more likely you are to get drafted. Like Buddy Heald from the Bahamas, it came out like five years into his career. He's like two years older than what everybody thought he was. The theory is that Ursan Ilyasov is actually a person named Arsan Ilyasov 
born in I, i'm gonna apologize i'm not even gonna try to butcher this this country's name but born there and in 2002 Ur ursin crossed the border into turkey at age 18 but then went missing, never showing up again. All the documents about Ersin Ilyasov simply vanished. But only a month later, a person would go to the Turkish authorities and say that they forgot to register a 15-year-old son, a boy that turned out to be named Ersa Ilyasova. So it's it's low-key a really crazy story and conspiracy that, I mean, based on this one article, I can't say if I agree or disagree, but it's a part of NBA lore that I had nothing, I knew nothing about. So that's fun that we're learning something today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, me and very cool guy Smash, we are on the same page. He said the 2019 draft lottery is mass suspicious. Pelicans get their futures the future after AD and the Lakers get the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even peep or remember that the Lakers got the fourth overall pick that season to make the trade happen. Yeah. Whoa, so that low-key kind of rigged it for the Lakers to end up with Anthony Davis. That's low-key insane. I forgot about that that aspect. Shout out to you, very cool guy Smash. <laughs> this is a funny one. Um, that the Nuggets are employing and playing DeAndre Jordan to artificially boost Jokic's already ridiculous plus minus. That's 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 a fun one. Obviously not true, but still fun. The 2006 NBA Finals was rigged. Um, obviously this is the one where we got to see the Heat versus Mavericks. Now the person that did comment that was a Mavericks fan, and you're looking at the series, and if you weren't around then, you're probably asking why would anybody even consider this to be a rigged series? Well, in Game Six. The game in which the Miami Heat closed this, this one out, uh, Dwayne Wade shot 21 free throws by himself. I don't agree that it was rigged, but I can see someone seeing the the imbalance and foul shots and, and believe that it might have been rigged. I mean, in a six-game series, he shot nearly 100 free throws. Nearly 100 free throws. And the highest person on the Mavericks was 55 from Dirk. So, again, I don't, I don't necessarily agree, but I could see if I was a fan in 2006 of the Dallas Mavericks watching that game and being like, what the heck? Because in Game 5, that set up Game 6 to close out game, Dwayne Wade shot 21 of 25 from the free throw line. So, two back-to-back -back games where Dwayne Wade took over 20 free throws? Hmm. Maybe a, maybe a little fishy, depending on who you ask. And it was a 2-2 series at that point. Um, we had a 4C Dallas Mavericks that, that wasn't supposed to be there. Shaq, I want to say on his last leg because he played a few years after this, but um, an older version of Shaq at 33 years old. You got this young bird, um, emerging superstar, 24-year-old Dwayne Wade. So, you know, I don't agree. But I can, see, I can see the world in which people think it is. Okay, this might be the last one we end on. Here's one. The sports news shows deliberately make their anchors unlikable through scripts and overexposed to generate hate buzz and potentially let them go more easily if they want. Um, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, sports shows deliberately make their co-hosts unlikable. Ah, man, I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. I will agree the majority of people on TV, at least when I watch them, come off as unlikable people. I can't say that they actually are. I never met them. But I do know for a fact that a lot of the people on TV that, that talk sports are playing a character. Undoubtedly, they're playing a character. They, they don't have that same level of energy or that same level of passion about things that you might think they do because they're they're playing to this. They're, they're trying to do this. They're trying to get the numbers up. These people work 20 plus years to even have an opportunity to have a TV show. So they're going to do everything in their power to keep it. They're going to do everything in their power to keep the numbers up. So yeah, you might get a bad take that they don't even believe in because they know that it might go viral on Twitter and they might get people to talk about it, to talk about it, to talk about it. For example, I don't know what happened between Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless the other day when they kind of got into it. I, I can't tell you it was fake. I can't say that. But it got people talking. It, it got people talking. At the end of the day, that's what these shows are for and about. To get people to say the name. That's why you have Skip Bayless on Twitter damn near exclusively talking bad about LeBron because LeBron James gets clicks. If I made a video specifically about LeBron James right now, it's going to be my best performing video out of my last 10. That's the name that LeBron James carries. So this, this guy who, again, wants to continue to stay. I'm not saying it makes me seem like I'm shitting on. I'm not um, that that that's job is literally to stay relevant is going to almost exclusively talk about this one thing. And that one thing is LeBron James because it works. Unfortunate. But one thing I will say, I think this next generation of people that do talk shows and, and 15, 20 years or whatever, maybe when the new people start getting in, we might see less of that and more of legitimate level-headed conversation because i think that's what people enjoy now the whole talking head thing i think it's an overplayed and dead medium close to dead medium 
So guess we'll see. Huh. Guess we'll see.